Our next section is method overloading and method overriding. So what is method overloading? In this, a class has more than one method with same name, but having a different signature. By different signature, I mean it is having a different parameter. It adds or extend the behavior of an existing method. Now let's check the definition again. A class has more than one method with same name but having a different signature. Does this statement sound familiar to you? Yes, you guess is right. So this is a concept of polymorphism or more precisely compile time polymorphism where we are having a method with a same name but it can have a different parameters. This a method signature includes number and type of the parameter that is their data type and it does not include method return type and method access modifier. So by this statement it means that the method overloading concept only checks the number of parameter like what are the number of parameter is passed and what is the name of the method. It does not include the return type like what exactly they are returning whether they are returning void any integer or a string and their access modifier whether they are returning as a whether they have a public private or internal access modifier. again as i just mentioned it is an example of a compile time polymorphism because the actual calling method is resolved at compile time only this can be asked in an interview like what is compile time polymorphism or what is method overloading if an interviewer asks you these two questions then the answer would be same that it simply means that a one method with the same name can have different parameters. Now let's check how this method overloading or a compile time polymorphism is implemented in C sharp. So here you can see that we have created a class named as program and this class class consists of a method name total sum. The return type of method is void which means that it is not returning anything and it accepts two value type parameter or a value parameter like int a and int b and inside this body it is just printing those method as a sum that is sum of numbers is a and b in a same class program we do have another method as total sum you can see the name of these methods are identical earlier as well there is total sum and now there is total sum but the data type of parameter is different in the first method we were passing as an integer parameter whereas the second method we are passing a double parameter so this is a called as compile time polymorphism where the method name is same but the types of parameter is passed as double again is different sorry again in this method signature we are just printing the input provided from the calling method now let's check its output so in the driver class or you can say driver function we created an object of that class and we just call those two methods. In the first method, we enter a parameter or input as 57 because it consists of an integer value. In the second method, we passed a decimal value or you can say a double value because it accepts a double value. Now let's check what would be the output. The output of the first method would be 7, that is 5. Sorry, this output is wrong, but you can say it should be 7 plus 5 that is 12 and the output of the second method is again a plus b that is 67.2 so this is how the method overloading works in a c sharp and it is also termed as a compile type polymorphism please make sure that you remember this concept that compile type polymorphism and method overloading is one and thing now let's move to method overriding like what is method overriding? In this method overriding, a derived class has the same method exactly with the signature as the base class. So in the concept of inheritance, we have studied that we do have a derived class and a base class. And since the inheritance provide us a code reusability, so we can just have a same method in the base class and then method can be invoked by a derived class. So this is something which we have already discussed in an inheritance chapter. Now let's say in my calling class or you say in my derived class, I want some different functionality of my method. So the first option is just create a new method with a different name. 
which is not advisable. The second option is that we can have the same method name as with a base class, but with a little, little tweak, we can make it modify and can so that it can perform as per our expectation. So what exactly we have to modify it? We can just change the behavior by doing some kind of modification. Unlike method overloading, here the method must have the same access modifier. So again, a good interview question. What is the prerequisite of having a method overriding? It simply says that in case of method overriding, there should be a base class and a child class, or there, let's say a base class and a derived class, and the method which we want to override should have the same access modifier, that is public, protected, and internal. Private in this case will not work because private simply means that that will be on that particular class only. So in method overriding, the access modifier should be same. Again, it's an example of a runtime polymorphism where the actual method calling is resolved at runtime. Now, this is a very important interview question. An interviewer can ask this question in two ways. What is method overriding or what is runtime polymorphism? Even they can ask in this way as well. What is the difference between method overloading that is compile time polymorphism and method overriding that is runtime polymorphism? They can only ask, they can also ask what is the difference between compile time and runtime polymorphism? And answer of all these questions is this, the one that we are discussing. Now let's check how to implement a method overriding in detail. So again, you can say that we have created a class name as Polygon, which is our base class and Square, which is our derived class because we have used inheritance over here. Now you can see that a base class consists of a method name as Render, which is just displaying an output on the console that is rendering Polygon. Now in a child class as well, we do have a same method as Render. Remember in earlier slides, we discussed that if a base class is having a same method name, then what's the point of creating a same method with a child class? Yes, we can do that. We can have the same method in a child class and we can force compiler to execute our method in the child class instead of executing the method that is available inside the base class. So how we can do this? We can do this with the help of this virtual and override key. So suppose if we want to override the functionality of render in my derived class, then I have to use a virtual keyword in my base class. Again, an interview question. So how can you override your base class method? The simple answer is that you have to use a virtual keyword in your base class. And in the derived class, we have to use an override keyword. So whenever we do this combination and whenever we call an a same method of a derived class when compiler comes over here and it sees an override keyword it will simply execute the statement that is written inside your derived class and it will not execute the statement that is written inside the base class so let's check the output of these things in detail we have created a object of polygon that is polygon obj1 is new polygon. and now we are calling obj1 dot render so this since this is a base class only and this is an render method of base class so it will simply display the method of base class that is rendering polygon now in this line in the next line we are creating a child class object that is obj1 and this is basically uh, possible in inheritance where we can create an object of a base class with a child class and now if i call obj.render it will call the method available in the class. So this is how this method overloading and method overriding works in a Shisha programming language. Let's check the next method type that is method hiding. Again, as I discussed, the output is sorry, the output is rendering polygon in the first case and rendering a square in the last case. Now let's check method hiding. Like what is method hiding? A method hiding is a process or it's a way to hide the method of a base class into a derived class using a new keyword. This can be again an interview question and it can be asked like explain the difference between method overloading 
method overriding and method adding. So overloading and overriding is something which we have discussed so far. And now we are discussing method adding. And this can be done or basically this is used to hide the method of a base class into a derived class. Unlike method overriding, the base class method does not need to be declared as virtual. So remember in the previous slide we discussed that if you have to do a method overriding, the base class method should have a specific keyword that is virtual. That requirement is not here in case of method overriding. In method overriding, there is no need of creating a virtual keyword in your base class. And again, the actual method calling is resolved as compile time. So whatsoever method need to be called by compiler in case of method hiding as well, that is done at the compile time only. So let's understand this with the help of an example. So here we have created a class name as A and we have declared a method as public void test. Again in class B, which is inheriting a class A, we have again declared a method their name as public new void test. Here you can see that we have used a new keyword. It simply means that we are hiding the existence of a same method in the base class. So whenever you create an object of a derived class and call this method, you will get an output as p.test, which is printed here. So this is how the method overriding over method hiding work in a in programming. So far we have covered a various topic about OOPs, we have covered about polymorphism, we have covered about encapsulation, abstraction, we have covered about its different things and we have covered about the method overloading, overloading, method hiding as well. Please let us know if you have any questions around this topic. Thank you.